So you want to make an isometric game? Okay, here are your options. Mess up the coordinates, cry about animations, replace all characters with cubes. What, you don't like this? Okay, there are still options for you. Here are three plus ways you can make an isometric game. In this video you will learn how to create an isometric view in multiple ways, how different the games look in all of them, and what are the pros and cons of each one in terms of art, movement and animations. All of this is for you to decide which approach is the best for your next isometric game. So I have already made a video on this topic, but it was a year ago and since then I have gained more knowledge about isometric games and I'm ready to share it with you. What is isometric? It is a method for visually representing three-dimensional objects in two dimensions. Isometric games have begun their story when 3D wasn't possible yet and allowed the player to get more details about the world. Making a game with this perspective can be an aesthetical choice as well as a technical one to give the player more control over the world. Usually this type of view is used in city builders, tycoons, RTS and RPGs where you have to see the whole map. Let's start with classics, 2D isometric. This approach was used a lot in older games, mostly because 3D wasn't quite developed yet and it was a way to show three dimensions of an object at the same time. A game like that would have a regular 2D project and the perspective is achieved by drawing isometric sprites. To know that an isometric game is made in pure 2D, you have to look for detailed sprites and a lack of complex animations. Also, the shadows and lights have to be simulated on the art side so they might look unnatural. A lot of these games are made with pixel art, but it's not a guarantee and I'll talk about that later in the video. The advantage of using this approach is the detailed look you can get from 2D art. Plus, it can be easier to make for you, for example if you go for a pixel art look. Also, it can be an aesthetical choice. The trade-off, however, is that you have to deal with colliders, like how would you let your character go around the building. Also, there are sprite sorting issues, especially with wider objects. Moreover, the animated characters are tedious to do. There are a lot of directions to think about and you can't just leave the sprite. This approach is good for games that don't have many animations and movement in general, so the fewer characters are to animate, the better. A good example would be a puzzle game, a simple city builder with a lot of cool buildings, or turn-based RPGs. Next up is a more modern approach, 3D isometric. Since 3D became possible, isometric game didn't actually disappear, they just adapted. The effect of isometric perspective is achieved by rotating the camera to about 30 degrees on the x-axis and to 45 on the y-axis. Also, you can set the camera projection to orthographic if you want to achieve that flat look, or leave it as perspective, which also can add a nice touch to your game. Most isometric games nowadays use this approach, it's pretty easy to spot, they have this volumetric feeling to them, and they can also have a lot of characters with lots of animations, and the movement range is quite diverse. Typically these games can have a lot of lights and effects. That's actually one of the pros of this approach, along with the perk of not dealing with isometric coordinates, colliders and sprite sorting. Yeah, it's pretty obvious why games use it now instead of the classic 2D. The disadvantage is losing the aesthetics and fewer details. Also, you'd need the knowledge of 3D modeling if you plan on making the art for the game. And if you don't have much experience with it, you might end up with bad textures and lack of shadows. The perfect game for this type of approach would be one with lots of characters and animations. It can be an RPG with fights, RDS, or an action-adventure, or a tycoon. And now to my personal favorite, 2D plus 3D. This is when it is a 3D project, but there are 2D sprites in it. It can be the character or the environment. You can also combine 2D sprites and 3D models to build the environment, as the developers did in Heyday. I discovered it when I was making a tutorial series about making a clone of this game in Unity. Sometimes you wouldn't even guess that the game combines 3D models and 2D art. Like in Hades, I had to slow down the gameplay clips to see that the character in fights goes over some ground parts that are supposed to be elevated. 
but sometimes it's pretty obvious. The main perk you get is that you can have it all, the detailed look and the smoothness of animations. The downside, however, is that you have to deal with sprite rotations and shadows. Collisions can be handled pretty well unless you have complex objects with unusual shapes. If you want to know more about this approach, you can check out my other video all about using 2D sprites in 3D projects. And I also have dedicated videos about the other two approaches. I'll leave links to all of them in the description of this video. Now, I wanted to show you a few more examples of games that use different approaches. First, remember that a set pixel art is not always for 2D. Okay, there are games that mimic pixel art on 3D objects. This game, A Short Hike, is 3D isometric, but it has this interesting pixel art effect in it. There are a lot of other texturing effects that can make your game look hand-drawn. Like this game, Hylix 2, really got me confused. I honestly don't know what they used there. Second, you can write 2D textures on 3D models, like this guy from Ista Inc. did. And also some Mario game. Kill two birds with one stone, get the detailed textures and get rid of all the problems you have with 2D isometric. And that's it for this video, I hope it was useful to you. Subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications to get more useful and interesting content from me. Also, I'd like to thank all my patrons who are supporting me and welcome new members, especially Haken Pichakti. Secondary, a girl See you in the next video. Bye.